Alcatraz. The Rock. Dead ahead lies the infamous island of Alcatraz. The name Alcatraz comes from the Spanish word Alcatraces, meaning strange birds or pelicans. Alcatraz, often called The Rock, in 1934 became a federal prison designed to house prisoners who were problems in other federal penitentiaries. Among the more noted criminals at Alcatraz were Scarface Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, Alvin Carpus, and famous Robert Stroud, the Birdman of Alcatraz. As we get closer, notice the treacherous currents around the island. Today, the old prison is abandoned, an island of ghosts. The corridors and cells are empty. Yet for some, like former prisoner John Giles, it is a citadel full of haunting and bitter memories. I just, I can't bring back any feeling of wonder or astonishment or anything. It, uh, it's just as if I'd never left and never gone away. Everything. Everything looks just like it did in those days when everything was so strict and you didn't know whether you were coming or going or whether you'd ever see daylight again. In the very few cases where prisoners have disappeared from the island, all indications point to their being swept with the tide out through the Golden Gate to a watery grave. A man with a long time He's got only one thought. He wants to escape. Need to escape. You think it's the end of your life. You don't want to die in prison. You have that obsession. That's all you think about. That fills your waking hours from morning till night. My own life has been, it was pretty well misspent. There's just different ways of misspending your life, and I took the one that took me to jail, and other people, theirs leads in other things. Those old cells are pretty small, when you come to think of it. Sixteen hours a day, looking out. It's pretty light now. In those days, you, you'd run smack up against the wall any time you wandered around in the dark. But if you spend much time there, you, you had to do something to keep, your, to keep your mind from running haywire, to, you know, to keep your mind off your, your thoughts. In 1946, the historic Battle of Alcatraz took place. Two convicts had managed to overpower their guards and took over the main cell block. There was the machine guns, the grenade rifles, the spring fields, the garrons. And between every burst, I remember, I can remember, I still can remember that white crown sparrow that sang on the roof. With the use of detonation bombs and anti-tank shells, the three leaders of the break were forced into the utility corridor. You could hear the water pipes busting. I could hear a man praying in the night. A detachment of Marines guarded the prisoners still in the recreation yard. The Marine lieutenant did. He said, watch those men down there. If they make a move towards this wall. And then I heard the sparrow sing. Fire one round. And I heard the sparrow sing again. And then he said, shoot to kill. Everybody has invisible bars around them. The Alcatraz, as it is today, a deserted prison, symbolizes the, the uh, nature of the picture, which is to do with uh, incarceration, imprisonment, but not enforced imprisonment, but the kind of imprisonment that people uh, impose upon themselves or the society imposes upon them. 
Alcatraz is one of 29 locations in MGM's forthcoming film, Point Blank, directed by John Borman, starring Academy Award winner Lee Marvin and featuring Canadian actor John Vernon. Director Borman describes more of his feelings for Point Blank. This is a story of a man who is obsessed and he pits himself against a criminal organization. And Lee Marvin plays a character who wants something from this organization. He wants a sum of money, which he believes to be his. And he goes for it in a very obsessional way and in the process totally destroys this organization. The setting lends its own drama to this story of a man just free of prison who seeks a single-minded revenge. Lee, I think, is remarkable. What he has is, a, is total concentration, yeah. which is what um, a film actor have to have. Because a film actor, you see, he's asked to stand around for hour after hour, and suddenly, snap, he's got to come and do it. And uh, he's got to perform as and when required, and then go back and sit down again. The ghosts of Alcatraz walk with the actors as they work. For both Lee Marvin and featured actor Keenan Wynn, working in the prison is an awesome experience. But the weather, isn't that primarily one of the things you have to worry about when you're out like this? I find this a little grim. The weather? Or the, the weather uh, and the island. Would you rather be inside the studio? I think there are lots of ways to be easier. I love location, but there's lots of difficulties. We're going to have to loop half of everything we've done. That ocean sounds pretty warm, doesn't it? You know, the cameraman said step back six inches. Right, let's you do see it. where I am? It must have been terrible seeing men living here day in and day out, hour after hour with no end to the days. The empty corridors and cells evoke thoughts for co-star Angie Dickinson. As I walk through the halls and look into each cell, I can't think of anything that I would want bad enough. No woman, no money, no hatred could be worth this. All modern societies are based on fear. Now, if a man moves into that kind of situation and his fears are not predictable, then he creates havoc. The picture is called Point Blank because the hero is shot in the stomach of Point Blank Range. And it's interesting that uh, the emotional, physical confrontations in the picture are all at this Point Blank Range. And the audience is that close to the action as well. Time has overtaken Alcatraz. For the first time, and possibly the last, a film has captured the rock as it was. Point blank. city limits of San Francisco. Isla de los Alcatrances, the Spanish explorers called it in the early 1700s. Island of the Pelicans, 22 acres of high earthquake stability, suitable for a lighthouse, a place of confinement for insurgent Indian leaders in 1870, a place of safekeeping for local prisoners during the great earthquake and fire of 1906, and ultimately, a U.S. penitentiary of the Bureau of Prisons from 1934 to 1963. Alcatraz, once the most feared prison in the nation, housed an awesome list of criminals. 
Men like Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, and Alvin Karpis, whose ghosts still linger in the dusty cells, the silent corridors, the deserted yard, and empty towers. Closed in April 1963 because its facilities were crumbling and very expensive to maintain, Alcatraz is once again making headlines. There is new life and excitement. For Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios and producers Judd Bernard and Robert Chartoff have done the impossible. Alcatraz has been obtained as the background for the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer film Point Blank. Even though Point Blank deals with crime, it is not about men in prison. Alcatraz serves only as an unusual backdrop against which the action-packed events take place. A cast and crew of 125 deluge the rock with thousands of tons of equipment, electric generators, lights, cameras. Yesterday's gloom with its fantastic rumors of life inside gives way to the pieces of a real-life jigsaw puzzle, a motion picture company. Point Blank stars Academy Award winner Lee Marvin in a powerful and suspenseful drama of crime, a million dollar heist, and inescapable love. Angie Dickinson displays her strength as a dramatic actress, bringing in addition the beauty that has won her worldwide fame. Director John Borman stages key scenes to take maximum advantage of the prison's grounds and 25 buildings. He must work around physical limitations that are inherent in the narrow cell blocks. In her first Hollywood film, Canada's Sharon Acker combines frailty and glamour as Marvin's wife. Lee Marvin learns one of the prison's highly guarded secrets, the lever combination that opens the cell doors. Much of the filming is done at night, as the cast and crew work long, grueling hours to keep the production on schedule as they work around the unpredictable weather without benefit of heat. Canadian actor John Vernon plays a pivotal role that triggers the story into motion. Rare moments of leisure, like mealtimes, are also spent further exploring the prison and enjoying the panoramic view of the San Francisco skyline. An old inmate roster is a grim reminder that where the company is working was actually the home of 200 crime-hardened convicts. 18 out of 24 hours they lived in the confinement of their cells. Since the Judd Bernard, Irwin Winkler production of Point Blank is the first film ever to be made inside Alcatraz, many national magazines have focused on the production. For an exclusive layout, Life magazine photographs Sharon and Angie. As they model today's flamboyant fashions, they make a startling contrast with the harshness of the rock. At one end of the San Francisco skyline is Fort Point, an old Spanish fortress. Another government installation of the past, it too lies deserted in the shadows of the Golden Gate Bridge superstructure. Originally, its cannons guarded the entrance to the bay. For a climatic point-blank scene, a helicopter daringly lands inside Fort Point to complete the execution of a million-dollar theft. Key part, Keenan Wynn unravels the suspense and tension into a surprise ending. The lure of a San Francisco skyline is enough to tempt any man to want his freedom. But there are reminders everywhere that the rock was a maximum security prison. Filming a scene in the treacherous icy waters that surround Alcatraz makes it quite clear to Lee Marvin and the company why no one ever escaped alive from the rock. Another part of the script is also extremely difficult for it must be staged within the confines of a single cell, five feet by eight feet. There is no place for lights, no room for the camera. Director Borman and his cast must slowly work out the action, trying one way, discarding, improvising another, 
until the most effective method of staging the scene is painstakingly devised. Now, if those 40, those 10... Following two weeks of location at Alcatraz, the Point Blank Production Company is ready to return to Culver City, where filming will continue on Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's sound stages. After the hustle and bustle that comes with being a Hollywood set, the rock seems even lonelier than before, as it stands solemn and deserted. Now ghosts of the rock can wander through postcard sunsets uninterrupted. The names and actions of those who have been here may be forgotten, but the rock will never be forgotten.